sounds it up. Uh, well, there is a good story about that. Um, I had written this, I had worked, this novel grew out of a screenplay. A screenplay written in the early 70s with Peter Bogdanovich for a, a movie to star John Wayne, James Stewart, and Henry Fonda, which was never made. For various reasons, like most movies, this one fell through. <coughs> and the script sort of lay around, lay around, pretty soon after about 12 years passed. It seemed like it wasn't going to get made, and I began to kind of doodle around with making a, a novel. And actually, the script wasn't a trail driving script. It did have three characters, sort of like Carl, and Gus, and Jake, and it, but it wasn't a trail driving script at all. Nothing to do with that. Or even Cowboys. And um, when I got to writing about it, I, when I, I, I wanted to keep the three characters, but I did want to make them cowboys and cattle and, and cattlemen, and it sort of evolved. But I, I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't that interested in it. And I kept stopping it and writing other books. I put it down twice and wrote other novels. And part of the reason was because I never had a good title. Titles are really important to me. I need to, the title kind of helps explain the book to me or to prepare me for the book or something. So I was coming back from a restaurant over, over north of Fort Worth one day and I, uh, I saw this old church bus sitting over by the side of the road and it said Lonesome Dove Baptist Church and I immediately realized that that was my title. Now the real Lonesome Dove was only a church and a cemetery. And as you go back to, if you go back to the Dallas Airport, you'll cross Dove Road just before you get to the airport. The okay. real church and the cemetery is just north of the Dallas Airport, just north of that little town, just north of Do they know? That you named? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why they call it Dove Acres and Dove Estates okay. and stuff like that. But that's grown up fairly recently, you know. But that is for, I, I never have been there. I, I know where it is roughly, but I've never been there. And anyway, of course, I moved it 600 miles south right on the border. But of course, to me, it's more metaphorical than that. It's the character of Newt that's really the lonesome dove and lonesome dove. He's the one that's lonesome because he's not acknowledged by his father. And I thought, well, at least I've got a title. I went back and wrote, wrote the rest of the book. I had written as much as 400 pages two or three times and kind of just lost interest. You know, a long novel, the problem of long novels always is, is sustaining your own interest in them. Because you can always lose it. You know, you write a thousand pages on so about some people, suppose you get interrupted as a baby or you have to go take care of a sick friend or something. You may have satisfied yourself without actually finishing the story, you know, it's hard to get back to. But I went home and finished the book in a couple of months. And I don't know that I would have if I hadn't seen that book, so I might have just abandoned it. I think that's a, a novelistic pleasure to sort of visit and revisit characters at different stages of their lives. And I've done it, I've done two tetralogies, the Lonson and Dad Tetralogy and the Terms of Endearment right. Tetralogy. Right. And I've done a trilogy, The Last Picture Show, Texas Vale Dwayne's Press. I do like that. I like coming back and catching characters twenty years later in their life. Generally, I start off with, I start, I start toward an ending. I will almost always imagine an ending. And I might let it perk for a couple of years and it will get pretty specific. And it doesn't give me the story. It just gives me where the story ends. And then the process of writing the book is the process of discovering how these people ended up this way. And it's full of surprises. You never know. You For lot, yourself as well? You get lots of bonuses. Yeah, you don't have all the characters in mind or what they're going to do. Once you've written a while, you develop a sense that you're just really kind of, like Faulkner said, listening to your characters and writing it down. So that's how I feel. That's how it feels. You feel that they've taken over and you're sort of typing away, recording. You're trying to visualize how they behave.
It's actually a fictional archetype that is really the oldest fictional archetype. It's Sancho Panza Don Quixote. It's the practical man who thinks in practical terms and the visionary whose head is in the clouds. And that's a great combination to build a novel. Um, I've said this in this essay book that I have coming out this fall called Walter Benjamin at the Dairy Queen, you know, that if you seek origins for Gus and Carl, it really isn't in my family or any rancher or cowboy that I ever knew. It's the Don and Sancho. It's an impersonal archetype. The mad Don and the practical man who's his friend and companion. And, uh, who, so that if you think of the novel as being some form that asks the question, you know, what's real? Having one person who's a little crazy and semi sort of mystical and poetic, and one person who thinks what's real is just, you know, the bread you eat and the work you do. Right. You have something that you can play off of very complicated. Gus would be the Don Quixote. Call would be Sancho. And in the long run, they don't quite ever reverse. In the real, in Don Quixote, they do reverse. They do reverse. They do reverse. In my book, they don't quite ever get to the point of reversing, but they, they kind of are tending in that direction when Gus dies.